Welcome to the first of two videos on graphing polar equations. This video deals with the more basic polar equations. Okay, so if we want to graph the polar equation r equals 3, there are several ways to do this. One way would be to recognize that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So if we squared both sides of this equation, we would have r squared equals 9, and then we could replace r squared with x squared plus y squared. So now we have a rectangular equation where this is a circle where the center is at 0, 0, and we have radius 3. If we want to keep this in polar form, what we could think of is we want to graph all of the points where r is equal to 3 and theta can be any angle. If we look at it this way, we could pick any angle between a ray and the polar axis and plot the point where r is equal to 3. So we'd have a point here when theta is equal to 0, when theta is 3 degrees, r is 3, 60 degrees, r is 3, 90 degrees, and so on. And what you'll see is we're forming a circle with radius 3 centered at the pole. It would look something like this. which of course matches our equation in rectangular form as well. Now let's take a look at theta is equal to pi over 3. Let's look at it in polar form first. What this is telling us is to plot all of the points where r can be any value but theta must be pi over 3. Well when theta is pi over 3 we'd be looking at this as the terminal side of the angle. And if r is positive we'd be plotting points along this terminal side. And if r is negative, remember we'd be plotting points, and remember if r was negative, we'd be plotting points on the ray pointing in the opposite direction or along here. So theta equals pi over 3 is actually a line that would look like this. If we really wanted to convert this to rectangular form, what we could do is take the tangent of both sides, so tangent theta is equal to the tangent of pi over 3, well, the tangent of pi over 3, that's a 60 degree angle, would be the square root 3 over 1. Next, remember that tangent theta is equal to y over x. So let's go ahead and perform that substitution. Now we could cross multiply y times 1 must equal square root 3 times x. So this verifies we have a line that passes through the pole or the origin and has slope square root 3 over 1. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more. Let's say we want to graph the polar equation r equals 3 sine theta. Another technique is to graph r equals 3 sine theta on the coordinate plane as reference, and this is often called the r value analysis. So what we're saying here is we'll call the y-axis r and the x-axis theta. And we'll try to use this information to graph it on the polar coordinate plane. So if we take a look at this first blue section, when theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, r increases from 0 to 3. So what that's telling us is, remember theta would be 0 here and theta would be pi over 2 here. So in this region, the radius increases from 0 to 3. And if we plotted enough points, we would see that it looks something like this. Then, when theta is between pi over 2 and pi, or in this region, the radius changes from positive 3 back to 0. So what happens is we start plotting points that would look something like this from pi over 2 to pi radians. Next, what we'll find between pi and 3 pi over 2 in this region, we might be thinking we're going to plot points in this region, but notice that from pi to 3 pi over 2, r is actually negative, so we'd be plotting points in the opposite direction, and these points would actually correspond to the blue points that we've already plotted here. And the same thing with this red piece, from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, r is negative, so we'd be plotting points up here in the second quadrant rather than the fourth. Let's also take a look at this on the graphing calculator. I've already typed in r equals 3 sine theta, and I've already set up the window we're in degrees, the step is 5 degrees at a time. Let's go ahead and graph it. This verifies that it is a circle. 
if we press trace, what this shows is the graph. And then as we move the point along, we'll see theta changing as it plots points on this graph. So you see that the radius would increase from 0 all the way up to 3. And then from 90 degrees to 180, it's going to go from 3 to 0. Now, unfortunately, this does not show the value of r on the screen. It just shows the rectangular coordinates and theta. But we can see that once it reaches 180, it starts to repeat itself back to what we plotted from 0 to 90 degrees. Now, of course, a third option would be to use the table feature, or essentially complete a t-table, where you pick an angle, find the corresponding value of r, and then plot that point. Here's another graph of what we just found using some software. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Let's graph r equals 3 cosine theta. Again, we'll use this graph as a reference, where our y-axis is now going to be r, and the x-axis will be our theta. And what we'll notice is that when theta is equal to zero degrees, the r value is three, so the point would actually be right here. So as theta approaches pi over two, r approaches zero. Then from pi over two to pi radians, notice that the r value is negative, we're not actually plotting points here, but in the opposite direction. We're in the fourth quadrant. So the radius starts at zero and increases to three. And we do get another circle, but now you can see it's oriented to the right. And then again, from pi to three pi over two, since r is negative, we end up plotting the points on this blue half of the circle again. And then from three pi over two to two pi, we are plotting points on this red region again as well. If we wanted to verify this on the calculator, we can. y equals 3 cosine theta now. The graph, you can see there it is. If we trace it, you can see from 0 to 90 degrees, we're plotting those points. From 90 to 180, we're plotting those points. And then again, it repeats. Or, of course, we can always go back to making a t-table where we pick our theta and find the corresponding value of r. Here's a nice graph of what we just found. Hope you found this explanation helpful. Polar equations can be a little tricky at first, but with the use of technology and the r-value analysis, hopefully you'll be successful. I did make one more video that goes over some additional examples. Thank you and have a good day.